On State Street in Central Campus, one building in particular catches your attention. From the outside, it looks like a fairy tale castle, but the inside contains even more mysteries. Built in 1889, Newbury Hall is the third oldest standing building on campus. It was named after railroad magnate John S. Newbury. At first, it housed the Student Christian Association, but since 1928, it has been home to the university's archaeological collections, now named the Kelsey Museum. Hi, I'm Sharon Herbert, and I'm here to introduce you to one of my favorite places on the University of Michigan campus, the Kelsey Museum of Archaeology. I love this place so much that I've spent the last 16 years of my life directing it. The museum is named after Professor Francis Kelsey. Uh, he was a professor of Latin here in the late 19th and 20th century. He was a tremendous visionary. He believed in the power of the object to connect students of today to people of the past. There's nothing like holding something that was made by somebody 2,000 years ago to connect you with the past. Professor Kelsey started by collecting one object, one little lamp piece in 1889, and by 1990, we had over 100,000 objects in the Kelsey Museum of Archaeology. In addition to university excavations, many of the artifacts were made available by the generous donations of individual collectors. Welcome. My name is Larry Jack here. I'm married to Eleanor. And this is our collection. I'm a graduate of the University of Michigan. I started my collection on my second trip to Israel in March of 1975. And I became fascinated by what people in the ancient world were able to do with just their imagination and, and what nature provided them. The collection, when you count the coins and everything, is more than 500 items. We then, we then decided it was time for something like this to be accessible to the general public. I said to myself, it's obvious. I graduated from the University of Michigan. Why wouldn't I want my collection to go there? And we're just uh, both b thrilled uh, that we have this opportunity to make our collection available to the public through the Kelsey Museum. Entering the Kelsey you are stepping into a time machine. You see up close the people who lived in the ancient cultures, the empires and religions of those who laid the foundations on which our own modern world stands. You are in their houses, seeing the pots and utensils they used. You are in their sleeping chambers, marveling at the many objects women used to beautify themselves. You are on the battlefield, alongside the well-armed soldier, and you are in the grave as a body is put to rest. The Kelsey's major focus is the Mediterranean basin and neighboring cultures, an area that stretches from Italy to Egypt and from North Africa to ancient Mesopotamia and Persia. The new exhibit wing is organized in two floors. The ground floor shows the collections from Greece, Egypt, Mesopotamia, and the Levant. Climbing to the second floor, past an exhibit of jars used to transport produce, we move into the heartland of the Romans, who dominated the entire Mediterranean from the first century before the Common Era until the rise of Islam in the seventh century. In this dark room, we have one of the greatest treasures of the Kelsey Museum. The beautiful frescoes from the Villa of the Mysteries in Pompeii. Why do we call this the Villa of the Mysteries? It's because of these paintings created in the first century AD. They are a strange mixture of daily life and the supernatural. We start here with this scene, which is a perfectly normal young mother teaching her son to read. We move on to other normal household activities, weaving. That's something Roman women did in the household. Here's where things start to get really strange. We have this fat, naked man with pointed ears and a couple of younger men with pointed ears. And they're talking to animals, wild animals that you'd never find in a house. 
you see this woman standing at the end who's registering alarm at this strange scene, raising her arms and throwing her cape over her head. We move here into the full world of the supernatural. This is the god Dionysus, the god of wine, women, and song, and also of sexuality and marriage. Even stranger is this character in the corner, a half-naked woman wielding a whip. Who is she going after? It seems to be this young woman, half-naked and taking comfort in the lap of an older woman. Meanwhile, there's another mostly naked woman dancing and playing the castanets. What is going on? We think it's the initiation of a young woman into marriage and sexuality. And that is reinforced by this last panel where we have a stereotypical bride fixing her hair and her makeup and looking into the mirror held by a cupid. An archaeological museum is many things at once. It's a huge safe house for antiquities and a generator of new knowledge. It holds labs for research and conservation, but most publicly, it provides space for exhibition, where people can observe and study the ancient world through the actual things that have survived thousands of years from those long gone civilizations. As you explore the treasures of the Kelsey, Pay attention to the details of each object. Try to imagine how the object was created and used. With knowledge you gain and with your imagination at work, you may be able to recreate a small piece of the ancient Mediterranean world right here in Ann Arbor. By doing so, you are making Kelsey's dream into a reality. <laughs>